Well, hello everyone. The wonderful building you see behind me, which is perhaps the most iconic building here in Bellingham, Washington, is the old Bellingham City Hall. What I plan to try to do is to engrave this building onto several layers of glass as part of the sculpture that I am going to try to make. Built in 1892, this fine building served as Bellingham City Hall until 1939. To this day, it is open to the public as part of the Watkin Museum to your welcome inside. With any project, you need raw materials. So here, one fine rainy day, in Cornwall Park here in Bellingham, I am properly dressed for the rain and gathering old saw blades that somebody had discarded here in Cornwall Park. With saw blades, the first thing you have to do is the simple but messy task of defanging the saw blade so the art patron will not get cut. Now here I'm using what's called a plasma cutter to do the cutting of the saw blades into the proper shapes. The plasma cutter is an electric cutting torch that behaves the same as your acetylene cutting torch but far cleaner. This also does a wonderful job as a drill to cut the holes for the screws without ruining drill bits. Here I am starting the process to weld the entire sculpture together. We're starting off with the steel facade that will hold the flowers and plants glass sculptures together. By the way, the welding process I'm using is called gas tungsten arc welding. It is the most difficult welding to learn how to do. However, it exerts the f finest control on fine metals. Here, by the way, I'm taking a little breaker break and cutting up a chunk of steel that I found on the street that looked like it was part of a saw blade. I am cleaning it up to make it look really beautiful, which this is done quite often using an angle grinder. It makes old steel look like new. By the way, gas tungsten arc welding is very popular with stainless steel and aluminum and other metals where you want to make a very nice, clean weld with all the, all the spattering and the smoke and the sludge that you have from other forms of welding. I've learned how to do this on my own. And by the way, when I learned how to do this, I was doing this in the living room of an apartment in Portland, Oregon, since I did not have a proper shop. This, by the way, is the facade in which the glass engraving of the old city hall will be mounted. Now here I'm getting ready to weld together the front facade. You probably notice that everything is clamped quite heavily to the work plate because when you're welding, things tend to warp real, real bad. And by the way, you can get warping even when you're properly clamped. Now, part of the facade will be an arrangement with bicycle gears. I'm doing some of the preparation and welding of the top facade, which is comprised of a bunch of old bicycle sprockets into place. Now, tape welding is great also because it allows me to weld dissimilar metals together. The bicycle parts are chromoly steel, while the saw blades are tool grade carbon steel. Using a variety of um, filler rods, I'm able to weld those together so they will stay and behave as if they're one contiguous piece of metal. 
This, by the way, takes a lot of patience, and sometimes you make a lot of mistakes of which you have to work around. Here is the stand for the sculpture. The two stanchions, by the way, are old um, socket wrenches, which I bought for 25 cents a piece at a place called the ReStore here in Bellingham. The foot itself is the center of a 12-inch saw blade that I also got for 50 cents at the ReStore. Here I am preparing the, the stanchions on which the other pieces will be mounted. I like to weld the screw heads of the mounting screws to the back side of the facade. Therefore, you will not see the screws when you're looking at the front of the sculpture. I wish to keep all means of attachment and operation invisible from the patron who's enjoying this sculpture. Now I am putting together the rigging to hold the sculpture to the base. The rigging is comprised of a vise and some pieces of square bar steel that will hold the sculpture upright as I rest it onto the stanchions on the base. That allows me to keep both of my hands free for the welding. In the past, I would try to hold it with one hand and weld it with the other hand, which courts disaster. I've also tried to weld the top piece while holding it steady with my chin, but that means I would not have visibility to the weld. So this is a great compromise and holds everything rock stable so there's no fear of the whole assembly falling into my lap while it's still hot. Here I'm doing an initial modeling of the metal part of the sculpture alone as I'm getting ready to start to work with the glass. Here I'm doing the glass engraving. This is full engraving and not chemical etching using a diamond ball tip and a high speed rotary tool similar to your Dremel tool but operating much faster uses lots of water and lots and lots of patience. This is not a hobby for those of you who want instant gratification. You need to be patient because you need to be constantly aware that if you make a mistake, you cannot erase it. You have to either accept it or work around it or you have to start the piece all over again. So this is one of the pieces for the plants and the flowers. There be two layers, one for the plant and one for the flowers. That allows each layer to be lit with different colored LEDs shining through the bottom of each of the layers. I will not show you the whole engraving as it is very long and very tedious. Here, by the way, I am welding part of the city hall itself. Again, I'm not gonna show myself welding the whole thing. There are three layers. Each one takes an hour, maybe an hour and a half to fully engrave. And I've already made two mistakes from which I had to throw the pieces away. I'm using a pen and ink drawing beneath the piece of glass to help guide me as I do the welding. The light you see at the left illuminates the glass from inside, which allows me to see the engraving clearer.
here I am here I'm showing how each layer of the two layers of glass can be illuminated by different colored LEDs. Now it's time to mount the layer, the pieces of glass using a silicone cement. These pieces of glass I'm mounting now are for the plants and the flowers which are on the front facade of the sculpture. Once you set the piece down, before you can do anything, you need to anchor it down and let it sit for about 24 hours. And the fumes are a bit obnoxious, so it's a good idea not to plan to do anything in the room until these fumes are dry and the glue is fully dried. Now, here I am getting ready to place the LEDs or the lights themselves known as light emitting diodes or LEDs for short. This is solid state, multicolored lighting. The individual LEDs are glued around the edges of the glass. And here I'm demonstrating how the light behaves in the glass when you're shining it through the edge of the glass. Now here, I am selecting and planning the LEDs for the, the old city hall sculpture. Different colors for different layers to create the effects of the final engraving. Checking it twice. And you, if you make a mistake, it's a lot of work to get out of it. Now here I'm starting the process of wiring. All the wiring is done by hand. I'm only showing you a portion of the wiring as the wiring takes about two hours to wire that entire sculpture together. There's over 100 individual LEDs used in the entire sculpture each one takes an average of five minutes to install and wire in place. This, by the way, requires a lot of patience. You cannot do this in a hurry, otherwise you can end up with a disaster. It helps to know basic electricity. While doing this with LEDs are polarized, you wire them wrong, and they will not work. Here I'm doing some very basic testing. And by the way, I had found one mistake that took me about a half hour to undo and correct. Now I'm doing the final assembly. All the wiring and all the engraving is now done. Using the nut and bolt construction, I made it easy for somebody to disassemble the sculpture in case they want to do cleaning of the individual pieces. Now here I am mounting the city hall part of the sculpture together, which, by the way, weighs about five pounds because there are three layers of glass that comprise the main part of the sculpture. There you see it, not lit of course, but now I have to do the final wiring and do it in a way that is as attractive as possible, as unobtrusive as possible, and as safe as possible for the patron who will purchase the sculpture at the charity auction. 
The sculpture, by the way, is all low voltage operation, 12 volts, to make it safer and simpler to build. Now we're doing the final cut and tape and glue down of the wiring, getting ready to do the final testing and the presentation. Now what I'm doing now is taping down the wiring because I'm going to anchor it with the silicone cement which would take 24 hours to dry and the wiring has to be held rigid until the cement is fully set. Now here's my first initial testing. Look. Now here's the presentation. I want to point out that Photography does this kind of sculpture no justice at all. The dynamic range of the human eye is much greater than that of a camera. So to truly appreciate this sculpture, you really need to see it in person. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you, and I wish you all well.